All right, guys, welcome back to another edition of Angry Fan Sports Edition. It's your host, Afro, and with me, I got the King Petty Crab with his return, along with Lord Fish. King, how you been, man? How you doing? I've been good. I've been good, man. A lot of stuff happening in the sports world. I'm just happy to be back. That's awesome, man. Lord Fish, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing phenomenal, ready to get the show started. You know what I'm happy with? I just want to say for everybody who's watching and listening, um, this dude bought a Tim Tebow jersey. It is here. He's not wearing it. And thank fucking God for that. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say before we go into it. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so we're going to start off with the MLB. Uh, there was a lot of trades that went down at the deadline. Um, a lot of great teams just got a lot better. Uh, let me just start with you, Lord Fish. What were the biggest trades you saw? What teams do you think made the most improvements? I say the Giants, the Dodgers, and the Yankees. I agree. The Yankees the added two – Two solid hitters and Anthony Rizzo and Joey Gallo. The Giants got an all-star and Chris Bryant. And then the Dodgers got a rental pitcher with uh, Max Scherzer and an all-star and Trey Turner. Those are definitely the biggest ones. I was a little shocked that, you know, the Red Sox didn't get any depth for their rotation or anything because uh, Chris Sale comes back. But let's say Chris Sale doesn't do too good coming back. Let's say his, I know he's supposed to pitch for the Wu Sox, I think, this Saturday. But hypothetically, if, you know, he has trouble, I'm surprised the Red Sox didn't try to get anybody else. I know they got some outfielder, but that was about it. Yeah, we got uh, Kyle Schwarber, who is a beast at the bat. And, you know, it's crazy. He's a left fielder. But we actually brought him in to play first base, who is a big black hole in our offense. Um, so bringing him in to add to our bats, I mean, I know you've seen the numbers. We have some of the best bats in baseball. So to add him to that lineup is fucking unreal. And if Chris Sale comes back, I agree with you. We should have got pitching. And that was the one thing I saw the Yankees fucked up on. They didn't get any pitching. All they did was add bats. But the bats that they added, Rizzo and Gallo, like you said, Joey Gallo being back-to-back home run derby champion. The dude's a monster, man. Um, they, they still have no pitching in New York. And right now they're third in the AL East. Um, you know, Boston's currently number two behind Tampa Bay. Um, but Boston has a chance to win the entire league. Um, and I do think they have what it takes, but adding that, uh, I'm not really too worried about the Yankees. They can sign all the batters in the world. If you got nobody to pitch to, it doesn't matter. Um, but I will agree, those three teams that you named, they had the best pickups in my mind. The Giants are currently the number one team in all of baseball, and they just added Chris Bryant, former rookie of the year in 2015, and then next year in 2016, he became an MVP. The dude is a monster, and I can't believe – the Chicago Cubs just gave up pretty much all of their best players. They gave he up was the- Javier Baez. They gave up Chris Bryant and Anthony Rizzo. I know Rizzo is older now, but like for them to give up like all their best players, I thought that was stupid. Like, what the fuck is Chicago doing right now? Chris Bryant was the last piece of that World Series team. He was yeah. the last one to go. Yeah, and it's crazy. They even lost John Lester, so they pretty much gave up everybody. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on that, but I mean, if you were going to pick teams right now based off what you saw, who do you think is going to go to the World Series? Who's coming out of the NL? Who's coming out of the AL? What's happening? Of course, I'm going to say the Red Sox, uh, the AL. I definitely believe it'll be an AL East team, whether it's the Rays, the Red Sox, or the Yankees. You know, there's still a lot of games left, and the Yankees just got two left-handed batters, which they didn't have. Over on the NL, it's it's a toss-up between the Giants and the Dodgers. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say the Giants, but you could also throw the Brewers in that conversation. Is that why you're wearing orange tonight? Are you a Giants fan now? Fuck Negative. Bandwagon. This is a Tom Brady tequila avocado <laughs> special. The Astros fan. Parental parental advisory. I know. I'm kind of surprised you didn't even name the Astros. Like, nah. You don't think they have a chance to go back this year? Nah, they gotta cheat. <laughs> what about you, Kurt? You got any picks in baseball this year? You know, I'm always rooting for the Red Sox. Um, uh, I see Tampa Bay up here, Chicago. I'm just looking at the standards. Uh, I'll go Red Sox. Probably Red Sox, Yankees for the championship. For the AL. So, who do you think for the NL? Um, I'll get, I'll say Giants and probably Dodgers. Yeah, I do think those are going to be the matchups. I, I will love to see that matchup. Uh, I, th- I think it's a great fucking matchup. And uh, I think everybody's forgetting about the Padres. I think the Padres still have a good team to where they compete. Also, 
you know, Atlanta, the Braves, they have a solid team as well. I know things aren't looking too well for everybody right now, but um, I do think we will have a Boston Red Sox and I do think San Francisco Giants uh, World Series matchup coming up. And uh, I do think Chris Bryan is, is that extra player because they pretty much got him on a rental. Um, I think that's exactly what they need to just go all in and win this year. And hopefully, who knows, maybe they'll resign him. Um, but that's it on baseball. Do you guys got anything to add on that? No, it's just a huge, huge trade deadline. Uh, kind of like it's been with NBA signings. There's a lot of moving parts. A lot of season left to play. Uh, definitely benefits some teams. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole MLB, there's way too many trades to talk about in the baseball, but we just talked on the, the biggest ones. Uh, but we can do a whole episode dedicated to baseball another day. Uh, right now, I want to go into basketball like you just brought up. I want to go right to the Olympics before we start talking about the NBA draft and NBA free agency. You know, USA won this morning uh, against Australia. It was a battle. It was a great game. And then Sylvania lost to France. So now we're going to get a revenge game against France in the gold medal game this Friday. Uh, I'm so excited for this matchup because everybody, and I mean everybody, has been talking shit about our Olympic team since the exhibition games. And including myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I've been the one saying, you know, you know, you guys gotta let these people, you know, get some minutes together. Like you got uh, Drew Holiday and Middleton who were in the finals. Ke- Devin Booker who was in the finals. These guys just joined the team like right when shit got started, like, and they were, you know, you get jet lag. How far is the flight to Japan? Like Jesus Christ, 13 hours. People were upset that, you know, we barely won our first game, like chill out. (laughs) And then we went and just dominated in our second game and things has just been on the up and up and Kevin Durant setting a record now holding the title for most points in uh, Olympics of all time, passing Carmelo Anthony. Craig, I know you got something to say about this. What are your thoughts on our Olympic team right now? I feel like everyone was working out the kinks when we got everyone back from the finals. I think that's when the real team started to dig in because those guys were already going like um, Drew Holiday, uh, who else? Booker, once those guys came in. I yeah, felt Middleton. Like the, yeah, the, ceil- the ceiling was just – I feel happy for all the other countries too because like Fournier, Batum, these free agent guys, these current free agents actually are doing – big for their country no no and longer free agents. no longer free agents. yeah uh, no Batum yeah. re-signed and fournier signed a deal but we'll talk about that in a second let's go back to the olympic gold medal game remember we lost to france and we had to fight our way back in do the qualifiers to get back to this gold medal game and get our revenge um if we lose how bad does this look on kd uh Kurt, it looks bad. Uh, i don't think it looks bad on kd uh, Olympics is really more of a team game. It's not like the NBA where it's a single pull. Like, you know what I mean? And I feel like you got to go more to your stars. So it can't only be KD, even though KD is one of the world's greatest. All right, players. well, let me re-ask the question. And Lord Fish, I'm going to go with you. The supposed greatest player in the world right now, Kevin Durant, if he loses a gold medal game and we walk away with silver, can he be called the greatest player in the world? No, it's a smudge on his legacy. It's a huge one. You can't do that. A a big thing we've been talking about, and there's been huge debates on social media and everything like that, is back in 1992, you know, you had the dream team, everything like that. Basketball wasn't developed in other parts of the world. So the U.S. just dominated. Now the biggest conversation are people like, oh, you know, the MVP was from Serbia. The, you know, um, Giannis is from Greece, et cetera. All these players are from all over the world now, all these top elite players. But the thing is, they don't all play on the same team. When I look at, you know, Team USA basketball and stuff like that, we're like Brazil for soccer or we're like Russia for hockey. You're supposed to dominate. That's your job. So if Kevin Durant and Team USA do not win this goal, <laughs> it is a smudge on all their legacies. Can I, I agree say something? with you? What do you got to say, Kurt? Let me hear it. But you know what's so funny about if you notice the past probably three Olympics, our best players don't play in the Olympics. Curry's not there, and you're not scrutinized Curry for not playing. You're not scrutinized LeBron James, who probably I think he did lose to that France team. Um, you're not scrutinized all these other guys for not playing. So why is it all fall on Kevin Durant? It's a, because right, so if you sign up to hold on, you sign up me... to play for that team, you're you're on the hook. 
You got when that you, responsibility to win out. You have the Twitter handle Easy Money Sniper, right? Oh, here we go. And you, and you walk around in the finals and say, I'm Kevin Durant. Y'all know who I am. And yes. you don't disagree when people call you the greatest player in the world, and then you sign up to play for the team. Curry turned it down. He declined. LeBron James yes. turned it down. He declined. Curry has never yes. played for the Olympics, and I am heartbroken that he did well, it. Why? Draymond Green came out and said what he said, you know, and he defended Curry. Curry, the day after they lost, he went right back into the gym. He's already working on getting better for a title next year for the okay, Warriors. Okay, so is everybody else. So right now, it's about this USA roster. If anything, oh, we should be scrutinizing Kevin Love and the other players who backed out and decided not to play for the team. When we should be scrutinizing the coaches. Why is JaVel McGee there? Okay. <laughs> it was a last. It was a last minute addition. You know, once Kevin Love backed out, you had to get somebody to support the country. Did you see the comments on Kevin Love after he left after him and Team USA parted ways? Yeah, there was a lot from, of comments from the guy. Like about. the guy was like, "We should have never asked him." Like. He was talking all this junk about him. Yeah, there was, I there was, it was very name. disrespectful, the comments that I saw. And, you know, Kevin Love, he came out, you know, and I don't blame him. Social media tore him apart when uh, they announced the roster and he was on it. And he removed himself because he said, I'm no longer that player. Uh, I don't deserve to be there, you know. And I respected that because – I was giving shit for people whose name was even on the list. And I was one of those people. We can go back to the old videos. I did not. I was not happy Kevin Love's name was on that list. I didn't think he deserved it. Um, but Popovich, he came out and defended Kevin Love. And he said, hey, like, I think this guy can use this as an opportunity to get back to where he needs to be at that Olympic level, that all-star level. And I, I understood that because, you know, he's gone through a lot mentally. And I do think he's going through even more now with adding his name, getting selected, then removing himself and even more people saying what you just said that we should have never even asked him. Like it's really fucked up. (laughs) Kevin love, regardless of what people want to say, he's an NBA champion. And when he was in Minnesota, he was arguably one of the best athletes we've ever seen play. Um, That took a backseat as soon as he went to Cleveland to play with LeBron, but we can't discredit Kevin love for the player who he used to be just like, Carmelo Anthony, you know, and we're going to talk about him in a little bit. You know, we all know Carmelo Anthony is one of the best players to ever play basketball, but he's not the man who he used to be. I think Melo should have been on that Olympic team. What do you guys think? Um, I'll say this. I think there needs to be like a, do they check people's like injury history? Because I don't think Kev Love. Yeah, because Kev Love still, he hasn't played since he got the calf injury. Nah, he played. What are you talking about? He came back, finished the season with the Cavs. So my whole thing is like they asked Kevin Love to come play, and he came and he played. And then the second they were done with him, injured everybody, everybody just shit on him. It's kind of like fucked up. Well, I mean, once you abandon your country, man, you're open game. People wanted to give him that opportunity, but like he basically just showed his true colors, man. Like at the end of the day, he he was ready for it. He was hyped up. He kept talking about how he deserved to be there. And then he backed out last second. I just think he was hurt. He's not hurt, bro. Like Kevin Love was healthy at the end of the NBA season, bro. He was ready to go. Hurt mentally, hurt physically, hurt spiritually. He's hurt somehow. Sounds like Ben Simmons. Don't don't bring up Benny Boom right now, okay? Yo, don't, don't disrespect man. my guy. We're going to talk about him in a, in a little bit. All right, that's enough about the Olympics. I just want to ask you guys one simple question. Gold or silver? King, I'm starting with you. Gold or silver? Kevin Durant, 30-piece nuggets. Gold. All right, Lord Fish, what you thinking? Gold. Yeah, I think we're going to blow them out by like 30, 40 points. I, I, think, I think we're going to prove a point with this, and, and nobody's going to talk about Fournier. Batum and none of these boys in Olympics. Nah, nah. Again. nah. There's one. There's one guy we gotta talk about, man. Luka Doncic. I want to give him a special shout out for being a baller. <laughs> so you think you think Luka um gets gets bronze medal? Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's gonna settle for less. I know that Australia team is a really tough team. It's a really tough team. Ranked number three in the world. Huh? Well, I mean, we'll see what happens. We'll talk about it again next week. Once again, those games are on Friday. And we will pick that up when that comes. Uh, Moving on, we're going to go to the NBA drafts. The Detroit Pistons had the number one pick for the first time in a long time, taking the consensus number one overall. I've been telling everybody since before the season, like basically even started, Cade Cunningham, 
I Kurt, I remember talking to you about it. Like, yo, this dude's definitely gonna be number one. It's not even a it's not even a contest. I already knew it was going to happen. The only other person that probably had an opportunity to do it was Jalen Green. Um, but Jalen Green, you know, he didn't go to college. You know, he played in the, you know, the G League or whatever you want to call it. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on Cade Cunningham going number one? Should have Detroit should have traded that pick? Uh, Lord Fish, I'll start with you. Absolutely not. He's supposed to be that guy. You know, he put up numbers. He was a beast in college. He did his one and done at Oklahoma State. But, um, I liked what they did. They also got that kid, Luca Garza, really, really late out of Iowa. But I think Cade was the consensus number one pick. Yeah, and you, really you just can't draft. pass up. No, they had a really good draft. Um, my, my favorite uh, draft class was definitely the Orlando Magic. Um, you know, being able to get Jalen Suggs at number five fucking amazed me. And then one of my favorite players in the draft, Franz Wagner. Um, or Franz Wagner, that he's so good. And the fact that they were able to get two great lottery picks and get Jalen Suggs. Jalen Suggs is arguably, you can argue he's better than Kate Cunningham. He balled up against Kate Cunningham. He shut down Kate Cunningham. And you, not many players can say that. So, um, uh, Bobby, what are your thoughts <laughs> on Orlando at this point in time? I mean, I'd say they're, like, definitely top three best grades out of the NBA draft. I say the consensus best team that drafted, you got to go with Houston because they got four first round picks. I don't know about that, man. But let me say that. So we'll, we'll go on this real quick. Cause I, I was looking over this. So Houston, they got Jalen green. who cool. I didn't like his style. I don't know what he was wearing to the NBA draft, but he's a phenomenal player. Then they got the dude. The Are kid you from Turk. this man swag right now? bro? Yeah, it was terrible. It looked like he was in the seventies. <laughs> Then they got the, the kid from Turkey who was an absolute beast. I think he was the MVP in the Turkish League. Then at 23, they got a kid from Spain who played on the best team in the Spain League. And uh, he's an absolute animal, big defensive player. And then they got Josh Christopher at 24 out of Arizona State. Uh, he only played 15 games in college due to injury, but he averaged 14, 4, and 1. So I feel like they made out the best. And you have to go with them. They made out the best because they had four, four first-round picks. All right, let me ask you this before I move back to King. Uh, well, who do you think surprised you the most in this draft? Because I already know mine. Well, what was the biggest surprise in the first round? Everybody says this. I mean, I like the kid they got, but o OKC drafted the kid from Australia. I thought he was a phenomenal You said what, Giddy? Giddy. Everybody was shocked he got drafted that early, but he did average 10, 7, and 7. He's a phenomenal passer. Uh, he's young. He's only 18, and uh, he's got a long way to go, but – I think he could definitely be good. I mean, I did tell you before the draft even started, because I know you were talking about him. Um, and I did tell you, I didn't even think he was a first round pick. And um, I, I know King's going to get mad at me when I say this, but like, I even, you know, I, I'm, I pretty much call it when I see it. And, you know, like I never said Markel Fultz should have been, I mean, I said Markel Fultz never should have been a top overall pick. I didn't think he should have been a top 10 pick. He should have been further down. Um, possibly second round, and to this day he's proven my point. Same with like Michael Carter, Michael Carter Williams. Where the hell is he gone? You know, I can, I can keep going and going about all the people I've been right about. I don't think Giddy was worth that pick. Um, but the person I'm surprised about is the Raptors picking Scotty Barnes number four. Um, they had an opportunity to get Jalen Suggs, and they they let him go to the Magic. And I don't know how you let that man go. Once again, he's arguably the best player in the draft after Kate. Kate Cunningham. Um, Kurt, what do you have to say about that, man? I have to say, OKC rigged the whole draft with that uh, guinea pick. I say the worst, who probably had the worst draft selection to me in my eyes was Cleveland. I don't know why they draft the center when they already have uh, with Jared Allen. They just signed him to like $100 million. Yeah, he signed a five-year deal extension. I'll say who actually got steals off this draft, I would agree with the Magic. Oh, I understand. Jalen Suggs falling to five is the biggest steal of the draft, and that's why they won, for, in my opinion. So, with Jalen Suggs getting drafted fifth and the Raptors taking Scotty Barnes, do you think the Raptors saw something wrong with Jalen Suggs? No, it's not that. It's just the position. You know, I, oh, they already have a they already have their point guard of the future. Yeah. yeah. So, they I already have two point guards. Well, a point guard and a half. I think it comes down to the GM at that point in time. You know, like the Celtics are the type of team, you know, Danny Ainge, I should say, was always best available. He didn't care if he had 
three forwards on the team, three point guards, three shooting guards. If the if the best position player at, at that point in time is where he has three, four players, he's still taking that player and he'll figure it out later. Um, so, so it comes down to management style, but I don't like, I think you're fucking crazy for letting that dude pass out. Like it blows my mind that that happened. With that being said, what the Orlando Magic do now? Well, I mean, yeah, right now they have a new coach, uh, and right now they have a young team. I think putting Jalen Suggs alongside Cole Anthony is going to be amazing because they're both great scorers, and um, Jalen Suggs is a solid defender. So I think they're going to be a one-two combo, and uh, I think the NBA has to watch out for sure. So what do you do with Fultz and the rest of them? What's it, what, are the moves, what are the moves for Orlando moving forward? Trade them for a pack of ramen. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> – Fultz might fall back to the six man role. Hey, he's if, good. if he can floor, if he can come off the bench and do what we all thought he was supposed to do, I think that would be amazing and it would be a huge come up for the Magic. I mean, think about that. You're talking about a number one overall pick player coming off your bench. We all know he has all the talent in the world. It's all mental with him, 100%. Yeah, he had a physical injury, but it's all mental. And But we all know he has a talent to be a beast. But one of the reasons why I always said he wasn't that good is because the players he played against in college, he didn't play in a good league or a good division. So in my opinion, he, he played against scrubs. But one of the reasons why the Raptors selected Scotty Barnes is because clearly things are not going well. Uh, Pascal Siakam or OG Ananobi, we all know those guys are going to be gone. So that's why they picked Scotty Barnes at number four. So I don't blame them for that. Um, but I still think Jalen Suggs would have been a better pick. And then you got to think Van Fleet is the standpoint guard of the future. Van Fleet, I fucking, I love Van Fleet, man. He He's so clutch. Like, he has one of the best stories, you know, somebody who, you know, had a grind and earn his spot, didn't even know if he was going to make the team, and now he's an NBA champion, and he's winning games. You know, I think him pairing up with Kyle Lowry, Kyle Lowry is now gone, but him working with Kyle Lowry for years really benefited him. And, and I'm, I'm so happy for that dude's future. I, I think they got a steal with him. But are right, you guys have any other thoughts on the NBA draft? Rookie of the year. Oh, Cade Cunningham, 100%. The only other person that has opportunity, I mean, I got the, Orlando, the, the Orlando Magic, like they don't really have anybody that can stop Jalen Suggs um, from going off. And then Houston, you have Jalen Green. He doesn't really have any competition for the ball. He's going to have the ball in his hand all the time. Um, so it's really going to be a, a great race to watch. Um, but I would not be surprised if Jalen Suggs wins over fucking uh, Kate Cunningham. Kate Cunningham actually has some competition in Detroit. Uh, there's some ballers in Detroit, man. I'll give you two names. Devon Mitchell, the Baylor point guard on the Sacramento Kings. And uh, I would say maybe Zaire Williams on the Pelicans from Stanford. Where you, where you, why are you, why are you picking these guys? Let me hear it. Why do you think that? Uh, have you watched uh, Devin Mitchell's last uh, summer league game? He put up 23. I, I know who he is, and I know how good he is. And I, I, I he yeah, really I is. He's a, dog, he's a dog point guard. I love I that like he it. wears number 45, just like Donovan Mitchell. You know, and, you know, he plays off the name and everything like that. But, like, you're forgetting De'Aaron Fox is there, bro. I'm, I'm not taught that doesn't mean anything. It's rotation. Bro, he can be, he you can think be he's going to win man. rookie? No, there's no way. Because Cade Cunningham's instant starter. Jalen Suggs is going to be an instant starter. And Jalen Green will be an instant starter. So I just said he, I said he won't have the opportunity to compete with those guys because the minutes alone, it's just, it's just too different. And uh, De'Aaron Fox, bro, last year he averaged 25 points. I know you love De'Aaron Fox, so I know you're not saying anything bad. I'm, I'm not saying that. I just I don't think this kid will have the minutes to play. All right, we'll see, man. All season ain't over. We'll see what moves. And then Zaire Williams, what, what makes you think she's going to do something? Who is over there on the Pelicans? So uh, I don't know if you saw, they actually signed Devontae Graham. That's their point guard. He's a two. He's a 6'8", 185 shooting guard. I mean, I, I don't know what they're gonna, what the Pelicans are going to do. Um, yeah, Josh Hart is a free agent. I don't even think they even have. I don't even remember who was Josh Hart's backup. I mean, <laughs> didn't they have Bledsoe over there? They had cool. Bledsoe in New Orleans. Ask Terry Rosier who that is. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Butzel can. That's too. Uh, I don't know. Devontae Graham and Eric Butzel. You mean, you did Zion is definitely gonna pack his bags. That's a bad matchup. All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this in a second. Uh, we're gonna go rookie of the year picks, and then we'll go into NBA free agency. But I, I'm just gonna throw this out there. I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick Cade Cunningham. He's gonna be rookie of the year. Uh, I think it's that's consensus. That what do you what do you think, Fish? Let's say Jalen Green. Jalen Green for Houston. Mm-hmm. It's not a bad pick. It's not a bad pick at all. He's played against grown men, better competition, playing in the G League and stuff. Out of everybody, he is the most prepared because he did play last year in the G League. So that that is a great pick. But I just think Cade Cunningham having the ball in his hands almost every play, you know, being able to set up everybody. Uh, I, I think like you said, Jalen. He got shut down by Jalen Suggs. Yeah, he did. So so what's gonna happen when he gets to the NBA? He might. Might be a learning curve there. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Just saying, I said he just got saying. shut down, but that was only a couple plays, not for a whole game. <laughs> Kate Cunningham is an offensive freak of nature. Don't don't get it twisted. I'm just saying. Jalen Suggs was good enough to stop him. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but now he's playing at next level talent. So we'll hey, see. We'll, we'll see when the time comes. And I, we'll definitely watch those games and we'll talk about it. So moving on to free agency, I'm just gonna go through every team. And then we'll talk about the highlights after that. So starting off, I'm going to go in alphabetical order. Starting off, we have the Atlanta Hawks. You know, they re-signed Trey Young, max contract. Congrats to them for that. You have John Collins agreeing to a five-year extension. That's huge for them. Lou Williams is returning on a one-year deal. That's huge. Sixth man of the year multiple times. I, I think Atlanta will be back in the playoffs next year. I don't think you guys disagree with me on that. Boston Celtics, the only move they've made is bringing back Enos Cantor. It's not the only move, bro. That is the only official move. They made a trade for Tristan Thompson, but it was never finalized. Um, when I even talk, what about Josh Richardson? Well, I mean, one, that's not even finalized either. Yeah. The only deal that's been finalized for the Celtics is Enos Cantor. So one of the reasons why those deals have not been finalized is because Brad Stevens, he lost the trade exception for Enos Cantor um, on last Sunday. Um, and because of that, now we have to wait till the, the regular season starts in order to get the trade exception back. And when we do do that, we'll have more cap space. So now the rumor is we're going to have about $14 million to play with, with our current roster that we have. And it looks like we might pull off a trade to bring Valachunas into Boston. So that's just a rumor that I'm hearing and seeing. Uh, I don't know if it's true. There's a couple other players at that 14 million cap that we can bring in. But once again, we need a big man in Boston. Um, so I'm very curious to see what happens. But as of now, we brought back Enos Cantor. It was very depressing seeing Enos Cantor get a double-double in Portland and balling out in Portland after he did nothing in Boston. So real quick before I move on, King, do you think we're going to see Enos Cantor play good in Boston now that Brad is the GM and not the coach? How do you see this playing out? I see him putting up his – he's a usual double-double. I don't – it's really on a defensive effort. Does he run the floor? I'll probably see him coming off the bench. I mean, I honest. definitely – I don't think he'll be a starter, and I'm, I'm really happy with him coming off the bench because he already knows our guys. He's familiar with the system. I do think the coach will have a new system, but I think he'll adjust to it well, especially after he went back to Portland. And he went right back in and started putting in work. Uh, Lord Fish, are you happy with this move? Do you think we could have done more? I've never liked Teen Scanner, so. Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, <laughs> I've never liked him. I think he's weird. I don't know. He can't go back to his home country. He'll get killed. I really want Lonzo Ball, but unfortunately signed with Chicago for four years, $85 million. Sucks. Stop. We'll get to the Bulls in a second. Get out of your feelings. Do you like Cantor back to Boston, or do you think it was a bad move? Bad move. I don't like him. See you okay. later. Okay. Moving on. We Can have I the say one? Oh, I wanted to say one thing. Not what were you going to say? I think as oh, – you see, I'm wearing the Celtics gear. Celtics need to give up on, like, past players that they already signed and they had history with. Like, just let it go. It is very upsetting that, you know, we brought back Al Horford and now Enos Cantor after we let him go. It, and, you know, it's funny, uh, Aaron Aaron Baines is a free agent. So if we uh, pick up Aaron Baines, I'm going to lose my shit. 
<laughs> I'm not. I'm not mad. I, I actually did like Aaron Baines, and I was upset when we lost him because I did think he played good when he moved on to Toronto. But then they stopped playing him because you know they had Bouchard over there putting in work. But um, all right, moving on. We have the Brooklyn Nets re-signing Blake Griffin for one year, signing Patty Mills to a two-year deal. I think that was a great move for them. And I know KD hit up the GM right after Patty Mills ball up on. Hit, hit shots right in his face, crossed them up, got to the basket. KD immediately hit him up like, yo, we need this dude on our team right now. So for KD to put out a word to bring in Patty Mills, I know but I know Lord Fish over here fucks with Patty Mills. Patty Curls. Um, <laughs> uh, King, what, what do you think about this move? Do you think this is a, a, a step in the right direction for the Nets? No, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's a good step in the right direction. You have a championship caliber point guard coming off the bench. Um, I don't know. Maybe, hey, it might be the year Kyrie and James Harden were really just two-point guard set or something. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see. I think it's good. Blake Griffin was a bad one. I think they should have just let Blake Griffin sit in free agency. There was so much other people out there that they could have grabbed other than Blake. Blake hasn't in the playoffs. Blake, Blake hasn't proved himself and he's another flopper he's just gonna flop his way to yeah, you know it's funny victory. before we move on uh speaking of another person who didn't do much in the playoffs um uh what's his name uh spencer dinwiddie was just traded to the washington wizards um the the wizards were trying really hard to get deandre jordan included in that trade but the team shut it down they refused to give up deandre jordan uh are you surprised by this even though we barely saw the guy play, like what, what do you guys think uh, about the, this? The, uh, I think DeAndre is he's a locker room type of guy. He keeps it all copacetic, and he's like one of those type of guys. So they need him over there. He understands it's not confrontational. So I think you want to keep all those guys, the non-confrontational guys. You don't want someone like I want to say like a PJ Tucker, but you don't want someone who's gonna be. A, who doesn't get minutes off the bench, who's like, you don't want an old Dwight Howard type of guy like on the Lakers, or you don't want someone who's going to just be like nagging all the time because they don't get minutes and they don't play. He knows his role. So it's just like if Al Holford on the Celtics, he's not going to cry if you take him out the game. You know who he reminds me of? Uh, Udonis Haslam with the Heat. Somebody who basically, like, yeah, he, basically he was a locker room guy. Is. Everybody loved him. Now he's an organizational guy, but like he didn't care if you needed him to go out there for a minute. He was out there for a minute, and he put in all the effort he could for that one minute. And uh, that that's what I see him being there for. I just think it's kind of crazy um, that they would bring him back. I, I honestly just feel like it's a waste of a roster spot, especially after you bring back Blake Griffin, who's somebody else is a shell of him for, of his former self. It's crazy how you have all these like expiring all-stars and I hate to use the word expiring like but these guys are going out on their old legs um but moving on uh Bobby this is where I'm going to come back to you you know DeMar DeRozan received a three-year deal and a sign and trade to Chicago um they also picked up Lonzo Ball uh, uh, Alex Caruso on a four-year deal Daniel Tice oh. to the Rockets oh. in a sign and trade and then the the Bulls also picked up my boy Tony Bradley out of UNC on a two-year deal the Bulls look really good, and I'm actually really surprised that Laurie Marketing is a free agent. I, I feel like they would want to bring him back, especially with the squad. I feel like that would just put him over the hump. But right now, the Chicago Bulls went from a non-playoff team to a fucking playoff contender. Um, Lord Fish, I'm going to start with you. Do you think Lonzo Ball and De- DeMar DeRozan teaming up with Zach Levine uh, push this team over the hump? I mean, I think they'll make it deep in the playoffs, but I don't see them getting to the Eastern Conference Finals. I don't need. They'll, they'll make it to the second round. I feel like we're not even talking about them the right now. Second? Yeah, I think they'll make it to the second. Mm, I don't I, know, man. Yeah, you yeah. got to think. There's some tough teams in the East because you got. Uh, yeah. you I know got you got the, the Heat, the Knicks. Only four teams can go to the second round. I don't know. We'll see. You got the Bucks. You got the Nets. You got the Celtics. You got the Heat. Like I'm automatically putting the Celtics in the second round, regardless. <laughs> no. I mean, but like, I do think they will be a playoff team. I don't think they'll be a deep playoff team. I you don't think I, they'll make it to the second round? No, because I mean, it depends on who they play. I mean, like, if we're talking about playoff teams, like, just like, eight, I just named game. four. You still have the New York Knicks, who are definitely going to go back, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you also have the 76ers, who I didn't just I didn't even name them in the four. Um, but we'll we'll talk about that shortly. 
Uh, moving on, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers, they signed Jared Allen to a five-year extension. We talked about that earlier. This is a team that I'm really confused about. The Dallas Mavericks signed Tim Hardaway Jr. to a four-year deal. Uh, they re-signed uh, uh, Boban, um, Sterling Brown, and uh, Reggie Bullock. I, I don't know what Dallas is doing, but it doesn't seem like they're doing anything to go in the right direction, especially we talked about the trade. Uh, the trade exception to get Josh Richardson to come to Boston. He's one of their best defensive players. And I know Christoph Porzingis is very unhappy and wants to go elsewhere. Um, uh, King, do you see Dallas making any major moves? I think they'll make moves. I think they're sitting right now on the cap, probably going to let uh, let a couple of people pass by. They'll. I think they're going to be a major push in season. I think they're going to make an in-season trade. I, I, I just want to put the this on hold for a second because I think a lot of teams right now, and I know a lot of Clippers fans are really upset right now. I think a lot of teams are waiting for Kawhi Leonard to come out of hiding. He's still the top remaining free agent target, and the Clippers can't really do anything because they need to know whether or not they need to give this dude more money or if they're able to go after other people to make the team better. And until he communicates, like they're kind of at a standstill. King, do you have any thoughts on what's going on with Kawhi and the Clippers? Um, I think what Kawhi is doing is letting all the pieces move. I think he's going to resign, but he wants to see what the – I think he's trying to see what the Clippers can get before he resigns and, like, restructure his deal. Because the, the, in the order for is, them to win – So not to cut won. you off, the thing that Kawhi is doing right now is he's waiting to see what people are signing for right now. And then he's going to go back and say, hey, give me give me this X amount of money. I need this because this dude got this because the, the market just went up. And we're going to talk about another player who fucked himself in a second. Um, but the market just went up. So Kawhi Leonard, he, he's put them in a very shitty situation because they only have so much money they can use. Um, so if he's waiting and watching to see all these people get all this money, do you think it's unfair of him to ask for more money, especially since he's hurt? It would have to be he had would have to sign for four years because there's one year he's literally not going to play. If I'm the organization, you sit that one year out. All right, cool. You just get paid to be happy. <laughs> Facts. That's really so, it. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to make it a four year and probably add a buffer in the beginning. So maybe say if he gets signed for four years right now, the year that he's not going to play, I'll give him probably like half of what he wants just for that one year. And then the rest of the year, he get the full max amount or some. I, I don't know. That's the only way I could see it work for them because you're really gonna have to count on Paul George to play his ass off. And then you still don't got Reggie Jackson, and you still have so many pieces open, and everyone already flooded to the Lakers. So, like, you feel me? Like now this fans in. Now you're gonna want people to go back to the games. PG is not gonna just do it himself. All right, all right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go back into the the free agency list, and then we'll pick up with the Clippers in LA uh, once we get back down to them. Um, the Denver Nuggets signed Austin Rivers for a year deal. Um, they also picked up Jeff Green, who I thought was a huge pickup for them. You know, he was huge for the Brooklyn Nets, and I was surprised Brooklyn let him go. So I do think we do see Denver Nuggets competing again next year, trying to get that title. Uh, the Pistons. Uh, they got Corey Joseph for three years. Kelly Olynyk. Kelly Olynyk played great for Houston after he left Miami, and he surprised the shit out of me. I was really upset I didn't have him on my fantasy team moving towards the end of the year because that dude was getting triple doubles out of nowhere. So I I do think Detroit uh, is gonna be a great fucking team next year. Uh, Golden State Warriors. Steph Curry is the first player in NBA history to sign two contracts over $200 million uh, and the second one being over 30 years old. I think that's fucking incredible. Golf clap to the GOAT. Golf clap to the GOAT. I got some haters in the room. It's all good. It's all no, good. No, I just want to see what they're going to do <laughs> in the next three years. Bro, you hear three of that contract, it's looking ugly, bro. First of all. That luxury tax. Hey, I, hey I, owners want to play luxury tax. That's great. I'm happy I, for I am a firm believer that the Golden State Warriors are going to the final section. I was telling – look, you can ask Lord Fish. I was even telling him I would put money down on it. I told him that in text yesterday. The Warriors are going to the finals, bro. And one of the main reasons why I think it's going to happen too 
is because I know Ben Simmons, his only trade destination is the Golden State Warriors. And if you put Benny Boom on that key, on that team with Draymond and Clay Thompson, oh my God, what? <laughs> ben Simmons is gonna play center. Yeah, I'd be cool with that. I would be totally cool with that. Not hey, not go, many centers. No could, yo, imagine seeing Joel Embiid match up against Ben Simmons. That would be fucking oh. hilarious. That would be so funny. They would probably fight. They one hundred percent they would fight. All right, um, the Warriors also picked up Otto Porter Jr. That was a great pickup. I don't see a lot of people talking about that. He's he's a really good spot-up shooter, and he has great length. Um, let's see, the Houston Rockets picked up uh, Daniel Tice uh, once again with a sign-and-trade. Your Pacers, right? They oh, re-signed TJ McConnell on a four-year deal. I was kind of surprised to see that. I'm not Steals calling. McGee, man. That's um, Steals McGee over there. Torrey Craig agreed to a two-year deal. And then they uh, offered uh, Kof- Kiefer Sykes a deal. So that's good for them. The Clippers, once again, all they've done so far is re-sign Nicholas Batum on a two-year deal because they don't know what the fuck's going on with Kawhi Leonard. They can't really explore options until they figure out what's going on. Now, the Lake Show. Lord Fish, I'm going to come to you on this one. So far, the Lakers have signed Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza, Malik Monk, Wayne Ellington, Kent Bazemore, Kendrick Nunn, and... Talon Horton Tucker. What are your thoughts on the Lakers and all the moves? And let's not forget, they recently got Russell Westbrook in a trade. Retirement home. (laughs) No, you're not such a hater. (laughs) I'm not going. I saw so many people talking so much shit about this team on social media these last few days, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And I'm like, yo, why are the Lakers getting all this heat? And then I even saw fucking, um, what's his name? What's the, what's the, uh, Colin Cowherd, he was just bashing the Lakers, talking about how old they are and thinks they don't have a chance and thinks they just made their team worse. And I have to ask, King, I'm going to come to you on this one. How does a team with Russell Westbrook, Anthony Davis, and LeBron James get worse? How is this a bad team? Do you see them going to the Western Conference Finals? Do you see them winning a championship? Do you see them playing against anybody in the finals? In the finals, I could see it happening. I could see the finals happening, but the biggest hump for them is going to be shooting. And they have no shooters making. on that team. Trevor also, Reza's they gave big. up defense. Uh, no disrespect, and not to Trevor, cut you off, they yeah, they get they gave up. Yeah. They gave up uh, Kyle Kuzma, who people oh, can man. talk shit about. No, no, people can talk shit about his. I understand, day, but but he was a three and D wing. And so was uh, KCP, a three and wing D. You gave up a lot of wing defense, and now, now you, LeBron James can't do it all anymore. And then you gotta think, he never does it all by himself. Then you gotta think, um, Wesley Matthews is gone, which didn't do anything. Yep. So my biggest thing is Westbrook's efficiency. How does LeBron manage everybody else? And fucking can AD stay healthy? Yeah, that's the that's you know, the big that's thing. gonna be a lot of rebounds coming out of LA. Once again, there's no shooters. That's gonna be a lot of fucking rebounds, bro. It's a it's physical. They they there to play physical, bro. Westbrook Westbrook with LeBron. That's alley oops. This is what I was telling people: if LeBron can figure out what went wrong with the big three in Miami and try to manage that into how Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis now is be- is what LeBron James would have wanted out of Chris Bosh. And Russell Westbrook is not a shooter. Dwayne Wade wasn't really known as a shooter, but who can shoot the mid-range. So if he can learn, if he know... If hey, my man Davis Flash did, could hit all the big shots he needed to. No, right? but that's what I'm saying. Like, he could do that. Wes- I'm not saying Westbrook can't. He can't do it at an efficient clip. And sometimes he's just too tunnel vision. If he can manage that, or LeBron could teach him how to manage that. I don't. I see them as trouble in the West. Okay, okay. Other than the Warriors, other than the Warriors, I see them as trouble in the West. Every other team, bye bye. Lord Fish, what are your thoughts on this LA Lakers team? I don't know. It's going to be interesting. I like how Melo and LeBron are finally playing together after all these years, but I can't see them getting any worse. I just don't know what they're going to do when all these dudes retire. Yeah, right now, I actually, I have a very close friend that's a a big Lakers fan, and I asked him, are you worried uh, about the future of your team with everybody being so old and only having two possible, 
one, two, possibly three years most left on that team. And the only thing I could think of is you're using Anthony Davis as a building block and using Russell yeah. Westbrook as a trade piece in the next year or so. Cause we already That's know dangerous. LeBron James is going to retire in purple and gold. Um, I, I just, one of the most disrespectful things I saw today, and I don't know if you guys saw this, um, they, uh, the Los Angeles Lakers had the bird rights to Alex Caruso and Alex Caruso, a fan favorite. He's also one of the best defensive guards in the league. So people can't hate on Alex Caruso. They want to hate on his bald spot and say he doesn't do anything. He's yeah, actually he's a, a really baller. good defensive guard. He's a ball smoking too much weed. He, he has been, he got, to agree. He's been he got in trouble a couple of times. Yeah. But besides yeah. that, right? LA Lakers had the, his bird rights. They could have matched any offer given to him. Now, once again, the Bulls offered Alex Caruso a four year deal worth 36 million. He immediately went back to the Lakers and said, Hey, this is the deal I got from Chicago. What's up? And they, they said there will be no counter offer. That's all they said to him. There will be no counter offer. Are you shocked that th- this LA team who n- needs people let go one of their best defensive players? Nope. It's LeBron Stan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's it's kind of let Caruso grow his wings. No, oh, you think this is a send off moment? I mean, but uh, you gotta think yeah, he's he, still young, bro. Like, he has like the he Lakers gave stayed him with his all chance. these guys and got better. No, but the Lakers gave him his chance, so now he's out in the free world. Let him do what he gotta do. I think he has a if, chance to be a solid it, six man coming out of Chicago's bench for sure. And Chicago got a lot of jumpers, a lot of people, Caruso, Levine, Rosen. My thing is what Kobe White's gonna do over there. Yo, he has a uh, crazy key role. Another, Lonzo, another UNC Tar Heel baby. Another Lonzo Tar Heel baby. Shoot the rock. Kobe White is taking over, man. No, I, like I will, Chicago. Chicago I will say this. I think one of the most entertaining games next year. Everybody's looking at like you know Lakers, Warriors, or Lakers Nets. I want Nets, Chicago Warriors. Phoenix, I I want to see it, Phoenix. and I think you guys will agree with this: the Chicago Bulls versus the Charlotte Hornets. That is going to be some of the most athletic and entertaining games of basketball. Also, you'll have Lonzo versus his two brothers in Charlotte. Uh, I just think that would be a huge game. Leandro's um, going to make the team after some shut the league, fuck up. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about that in a second. All right, going on to uh, the most important team in the East right now. And I'm sad to say the Miami Heat pulling off some major moves. Miami just signed Kyle Lowry in a sign and trade deal. They agreed to a max extension with Jimmy Butler. They signed Duncan Robinson to a five year deal. They picked up PJ Tucker. They re signed Victor Oladipo. Um, they signed Gabe Vincent. Um, they signed Max Struss. Um, what, what are you guys' thoughts on all these deals that Miami's doing right now? I mean, I just want to point out that they brought in Kyle Lowry, and a recent NBA champion. They brought in fucking P.J. Tucker, a recent NBA champion. And then you have Jimmy Butler, who has brought his team to the finals. And then you still have Bam out of Bayou. You have Tyler Hero. What are you guys' thoughts on this Miami Heat team? They also snagged Markeith Morris. Yeah, I don't care about that, dude. What, what, what do you think about this heat team? <laughs> oh, you going with me? Yes, I sure. say if you... healthy and efficient, this should be a finals NBA team. I, I do think be, they added pieces they, if they need to win the championship. They, they should yeah, – I'll say take that back. Fuck finals. There will be an Eastern Conference finals team because there's still some shit they got to get over the hump. Like – Injury woes. Let's see, let's see if Vic if Vic could come to life. I think Vic is the main piece out, out of that. Duncan Robinson, congrats on the big contract, but Vic and PJ, they gotta produce. As you know, PJ, PJ, PJ's a zero. He's five point seven rebounds a game. <laughs> so you need Vic, Vic if Victor Oladipo can go to Pacers Victor Oladipo. Not like prime time paces, but the year, like I'll say probably the year before. Yeah, the year before the injury. I mean, I will say I had Oladipo on my fantasy team last year. And when he played for the Rockets, he played great. And in the few games he played for the Heat, he played amazing. Um, And they let him run point guard. So I think having Victor Oladipo at your point guard spot is going to be amazing. 
And uh, and once again, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero, Jimmy Butler, P.J. Tucker. Like, this team is definitely a championship team. Um, I do think they will make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, Who they play against, I'm not sure. Um, But it's going to be very, very entertaining, and I'm very excited to see it. I wouldn't be surprised if we see them knock the Nets out of the playoffs and everybody starts talking shit about this Nets team. Um, But I don't think the Nets have what what it takes to beat this Heat team. You guys agree or disagree? Man, bro, man, the Heat better hope they get past the Celtics. That's what I got to say. You better hope they get past Milwaukee. <laughs> Don't... Listen, bro. The only team that's going to beat Milwaukee <laughs> lost in the semifinals, bro. No other team. The Hawks had no chance. Only bro... If Brooklyn had a healthy James Harden, we would have had the greatest series of all probably in basketball history. Other than the Cavs Warriors, bro. We'll never know, bro. We'll never know. We'll see. All right, moving on. We have the New York Knicks. The uh, Julius Randle agrees to an extension. Kemba Walker signed to the Ooh. New York Knicks after the OKC bought out that crazy ass contract. Um, they also brought back Derrick Rose, uh, Nurens Noel, Alec Burks, and Todd Gibson. Um, the biggest surprise I saw is that they decided to sign Evan Fournier to a four year deal. Um, so they just got they just got a lot of solid guards, you know, with Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier going to that team. That was a huge thing that New York was missing. They needed help at the guard spot. So the other thing they're missing is they need a big man. So now I'm, I'm curious, do you think they have what it takes to get out of the first round? And uh, Lord Fish, I'll start with you. So the next? Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. I'm a little shocked that they uh, gave their own Noel and Derek Rose that amount of money. But uh, <laughs> well, I definitely I get Derrick Rose that money. He didn't do good until Derrick Rose got there. Sorry. Their teams, their teams a lot better than last year. I think they'll they'll definitely get out of the first round. If they played up against the Atlanta Hawks right now, like they did last year with this team, they would have won. I agree with you, Kurt. You agree with him, man? I say it's it's a better team. You know, what I mean, you get upgrades. Um, if Derrick Rose out. and Kemba Walker are both healthy, they're going to be a scary offense. No, that's two different be very levels scary. of basketball. And I'm curious, um, does, so does this mean that Derrick Rose is going to come off as six-man? Because that's one hell of a six-man. I think so, yeah, he has to. There's no – because I don't I don't see anybody starting over Kemba. No disrespect to Derrick Rose. I think over nah, – you, nah, oh, you I like, think Derrick like Rose Kemba. had the better career, but Kemba's just – you can't not have Kemba come off. Like, he has to start. Kemba, yeah. I think the money talks, so Kemba is gonna have to be. You want to keep Kemba. You want to keep Kemba. Kemba happy. You don't want him to just smile his way into free agent. <laughs> smile yeah, his yeah. way to another trade. <laughs> For this poor but, man, dude, um, I was so happy he was in Boston. I'm upset things didn't work out, but I'm happy he's in New York because I know he really wanted to play in New York anyway. So good, good for him. I'm, I'm happy. Weakest for him. link of that team is Evan Fournier. I don't believe in his defense in the NBA. <laughs> His defense and in when NBA. you can average 20 points a game, I don't think you need to play defense. Melo yeah, proved that to me for years, bro. James Harden proved that to me for the last, like, five, six years. <laughs> James Harden gets steals. Yeah, he gets steals when he wants to. And Melo gets rebounds. I, hey, man, when you're that good at offense, you can pick and choose when you want to play defense. So I'm not hating on James Harden, but he's proved to everybody you can earn millions of dollars just shooting the basketball, 100%. All right, going on the OKC uh, shines Shea Gilgis Alexander to oh, a max we extension. Even talk about these guys. That was a huge move. Um, going, let's let's stay on OKC for a second. With all these draft picks, uh, they were the the biggest biggest disappointment this year. How have they not pulled off any crazy fucking trades? I really thought they were going to go after Damian Lillard, um, especially after they gave up Kemba Walker. I don't know what the fuck's going on with OKC, but it looks like this GM has lost his mind. It looked like they were one of the smartest people on the planet to just looking like a complete fucking moron. Um, Lord Fish, you got any thoughts on OKC and what's going on with this team? Nope, still suck. <laughs> what about you, King? What do you think? You think they're waiting? Uh, you think they're going to try to go after um, Kawhi and Leonard and give him like, all the money in the world? Uh, I don't think they're a destination. They're like the Cleveland Cavaliers. No one wants to go to OKC. Um, Because one, there's not really, they don't have a centerpiece. So they're going to have to, they're just doing it right. Just get a bunch of draft picks and see what you can get. Like all the guys they got overseas right now, they just probably just getting them ready for to play the NBA play style and then just keep 
doing research. They're probably looking three, four years ahead of ahead of time right now. So you think they're playing like, chess right now? Everybody else is playing checkers. Yeah, it's, what was it Sam Hinkie, the dude uh, that got Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, Jaleel Okafor? That that's the same. That's the same proto. That's the same staple. Like you got to lose, trade whatever pieces you can get, keep friendly contracts. So when it comes to that big year where you can sign four or five free agents, you sign four or five free agents. So what you're telling me is OKC is saying trust the process. Yeah. Their process is not wrong. Houston, if you th- if you look at it, Houston's kind of doing the same thing. Look at all the trade pieces they got rid of, people they got back to retain. Houston, I think Houston is probably a little more closer to like being a playoff contender than OKC because OKC only got uh, Shield Gildress Alexander. I don't think I don't know who's the second person on that. Uh, but- probably Dort. It, 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 he's okay. He's still got a long way to go shooting wise. He's a great, great defender. But like, the, I'm talking like, if you think of offensive talent, there's more offensive talent in Houston than OKC's whole. OKC, we'll see what the um the dude they drafted from Turkey, the center. They're saying he's a little, he's a, he's kind of like a Sabonis. Um, what the hell is this dude's name from Denver? How did I forget his name? Oh my gosh, okay. center. Yeah, Jokic. They said he's kind of like a baby Jokic, baby Sabonis, so we'll see. All right, after that blast from me, we're going to move on. Uh, the Philadelphia 76ers re-signs Danny Green for a two-year deal. Andre Drummond yeah. left L.A. to go to Philly. Um, I think that's why. fucking scary as shit. The fact that you're going to have Andre Drummond on the same court as Joel Embiid, I think people need to watch the fuck out. Old. Um, what would you say? Old, bad legs. All right, all right, Fish. Moving on, Phoenix Suns, they re-signed old-ass Chris Paul to a four-year deal. Oh, yeah. Cameron Payne re- returns with a three-year deal. JaVale McGee signs to a one-year deal, and they got uh, Abdul nice. Nadar, who, who returns on a two-year deal. Um, one of the biggest things um, Phoenix was missing was depth at the big, and the fact that they were able to bring in JaVale McGee, who is a championship player. Um, so, Chris Paul's gonna put him to work. Yeah, to, I mean, and he's gonna be playing behind DeAndre Ayton. The fact that DeAndre Ayton's actually gonna have help now, so if he gets in a foul trouble, they'll be good. Uh, I think that was a great move. Uh, I'm not a Javale McGee hater, like Shaq and the Fool or anything like that. He's, so he's, 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 his IQ's been getting better. He's playing Team USA, he wasn't playing Team USA before, Man. so that means something. The um, the Trailblazers um oh. got Norman Powell degree on a five year deal that was huge uh good for him uh Cody Zeller who I really like he signed a one year deal and then Tony Snell signed a one year deal the Sacramento Dark Kings Vader? the Sacramento Kings where players go to die I really I, I feel like that's where people go to die they got uh, Rashawn Holmes to agree to a four year deal Alex Len agreed to a two year deal Maurice Harkless signed a two year deal and Terrence Davis agreed to a two year deal. The Spurs got Zach Collins, Doug McDermott, Ryan Forbes. Um, the Raptors got Goran Dragic, uh, which is pretty good. You know, once again, I said Oladipo will be the starting point guard in Miami. I think that's one of the reasons why he signed there because Dragic is now gone. Um, Gary Trent Jr. returns on three-year deal. Kyle Lowry, once again, out. He's in Miami. And Sam Decker uh, is coming back to the NBA, and he is signing with the Raptors. So good for them. And then the Utah Jazz, um, they re-signed Mike Conley to a three-year deal. Rudy Gay uh, agreed to a two-year deal. Hassan Whiteside is joining the Utah Jazz. That's a huge move. So now you're going to have Rudy Gobert and Whiteside down there to worry about. That's that's going to be crazy. Um, and then Eric Pascal got traded from the Warriors to the Jazz for a draft pick. And then the Wizards, ending it off, uh, got Spencer Dinwiddie in a trade with the Brooklyn Nets. Um, after hearing everything that's going on with the NBA so far, who do you guys think made the most improvements? Uh, you know, obviously the LA Lakers, uh, the Miami Heat, the Chicago Bulls are the big three from what we've seen. But who do you think improved the most this offseason so far? Lord Fish, I'll start with you. New York Knicks. What? They signed, yeah. They signed Randall to the extension. They got Kemba Walker. They got Evan Fournier. I think those are big pieces. You, now Derek Rose drinking while we do the podcast. Uh, King, well, who, who, big man. Uh, who, who, who else do you <laughs> no, legitimately fine. think? He got a good point. He I mean, those, point. those are all the points I made. I think they they filled you, all the needs they need. They but they still you already need hit bench. the top three. 
They still need the, a you, bench. You hit the Heat, you hit the Bulls, and then you hit a third. I hit the Lakers, yeah. Lakers, Heat, like, so who else besides the Knicks? Well, that's what I'm asking. Who had the best, you- best offseason so far? Like, you're going to tell me that the New York Knicks had no, the best offseason just because they picked up fucking Evan I'd say that, and I'd, Walker? I'd say the Heat, but you already named them. No, I'm asking I, I, who was the best out of everybody I named. I'd but, say the Miami Heat. Okay. Can you got to reincorporate. You got to, like, rephrase. I said reincorporate. You got to incorporate the draft. And then if you incorporate free agency, I'll say a sneaky pick is Golden State Warriors, including with the draft, which is great. Great improvement. I would say, yeah. I'll say the Warriors is probably the only one. I'll say Warriors, Wizards, not really, but the piece-wise, the moving of the pieces, yeah. The Warriors and Wizards, other than Chicago, Miami, New York, and the Lakers. I'm not gonna lie. I think the biggest winner of free agency, besides Miami, I'm gonna have to put the Chicago Bulls up there. Um, can I? Can I? Honorable mention. Let's hear it. If every if everything goes well, Memphis Grizzlies. I mean, Memphis Grizzlies haven't done anything in the. Office. Haven't signed anybody. They haven't no, done anything. Stephen Adams. The Stephen that, I mean, Adams trade. You don't think that's that was gonna a be trade good? before free agency? But for free agency, they haven't picked up anybody. But I'm saying in corporate. That's off season. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, it's, I do like Stephen Adams playing in Memphis. I think I would buy that jersey. Uh, John Morant, Stephen Adams. Stephen Adams is one of my favorite players, so I'm really happy about that. They got they got a couple of young pieces to still, I mean, play around with people. Um. So the biggest winner, I'm going to say once again, is the Chicago Bulls getting Alonzo Ball on that team. Uh, I think that is very important. Now they have building pieces, but with Zach Levine, they have a reason to keep Zach Levine there, keep him happy. Um, the biggest losers to me are the New Orleans Pelicans. They did nothing to help improve the team. They brought in Devontae Graham after giving up Lonzo Ball. I mean, I like Devontae Graham, but there's a reason Charlotte was willing to let him go. LaMelo La- Ball went in there as a rookie and just took over. Um, I don't I don't see Devontae Graham doing any big things to make them – go over the hump and I do see Zion being unhappy and wanting out as soon as possible. I don't even think they're going to be an above 500 team. I think that team is going to be terrible. Um, Especially since I know they're interested in still trading Brandon Ingram and I see Miami pulling off getting that Brandon Ingram trade. Uh, There's rumors. One of the reasons they signed Duncan Robinson to a five-year extension is to trade him and tie the hero along to New Orleans for Brandon Ingram. So if you bring Brandon Ingram to the Miami Heat, that's definitely telling me they're going to the finals. But even now, they still have a finals team. Um, So I asked you guys who the biggest winners are. I just named the Pelicans as the biggest loser. Who do you guys think is the biggest loser? Indiana Pacers. Okay, see? Who'd you say? You said the Pacers. Indiana Pacers. Pacers. You're calling out your own team? Yep. Why, Why are the Pacers the biggest losers here? Let me hear it. Uh, we drafted a guy that's like 50 years old. Um, <laughs> he's 25, trade, bro. Stop it. <laughs> we put trade rumors into Malcolm Brogdon. We had a whole year of trade rumors for Miles Turner. We still have TJ Warren, bro. Who's our bench? Nobody. I hear you. I was hoping we was. I was hoping we was gonna get Demar Rose in. I would have been so happy if we got Westbrook because at least we got something. But bro, we have nothing. We still right. have our starting unit, whoop de doo but nothing. Before For a team we... that used to be in playoff contention. I hear you're saying, oh, I'm sorry, bro, but, like, it's the Pacers. I already knew this was going to happen, man. You guys well, that's, need, that's, that's you need to trade to Sabonis market. now and, and, like, get him out of there so he can do some good with his career before it's ruined yeah, and also focus. get something good in return before he leaves in free agency 100%. Oh, another thing, too. So, I was just reading – you guys traded Moses Brown for Josh Richardson, bro. Yeah. An exception. That's horrible. Why is Al Holford in this? Bro, I would have kept Al Holford. Man, please. No, Robert so, Williams, so, once again, those Al trades Holford, aren't finalized Holford, yet. Bro. They can still be no, changed. It's, final, it's finalized, bro. No, no, no. It's, it's not done yet. All right. Look it up, man. No, no. Trust me. I've looked it up. I've been waiting for it to go through, but it's not official yet. It's not on the only the finalized thing for the Celtics is uh, Ian Scanter. Um, trust me. I, I, I'm, I'm happy about getting Josh Richardson, and I'm upset about losing Moses Brown because I was excited about having the seven footer because I thought he was a great player. 
and he played a great game against us when we played. But before we move on to the NFL, there's one player I want to talk about that I, I just can't stop laughing at. Um, Dennis Schroeder turned down an extension with the LA what? Lakers last year, and now he's sitting in free agency and nobody no wants starting, him. No starting. No starting. I was telling people, <laughs> he he's the reason why they lost last year, bro, because he's a, he's a dud in the brain, bro. Like, he's not that good. He's he's perfect at the six man. Here's 20, 25 minutes. Go do what you got to do. He's not he's not an excellent facilitator. He couldn't run the pick and roll with um, AD and LeBron well. So definitely not a defender. They barely made it into the playoffs. Like, dude, trash. Get him out of here. <laughs> I thought he was an idiot for rejecting their offer. If anything, he just helped them out. And now that he's seeing all these people that are being signed, so he's stuck with three options. He can either A, re-sign with them and get less money um b go to a, a crap team and you know just settle for the the lowest offer or c um agree to a deal with the lakers and lose out completely on what they offered him before because sign he, a one-year deal he had a chance to get so. three years 85 million he wanted more because based off where he was in 2020 when they offered him the deal he basically would have been making the same uh, if you look at the uh, the inflation of the of the money, um, but now the market is not not good and, and nobody has a need for him. If anything, I can see the Pelicans picking him up. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe OKC. I don't know. But um, do you guys see this dude finding a home or getting a good deal? I see him playing a backup role on a contender. Okay. You can see you can see him go to Brooklyn for the low. You can see him go to Milwaukee for the low. So I mean, do you think you know turning down eighty five million dollars and now going for the low? Like when you're saying for the low, we're talking about like for team like the Brooklyn, they would have to sign him at like a veteran minimum. So that's his loss. Do you think you think he (laughs) would have to to bite his tongue and go go for that money just to go for a ring and then try again next year? He can go probably to Utah as a backup. There's so many places, bro. There's this option still open. He's just gonna have to for me, realistically, you ball out for one year, six man or not, you just ball out one year, bro. Just take a one year deal. All right, man. Take the loss. Cause that realistically it was his loss. It's just he didn't want to be in the shadows of LeBron James. As Lord Fish has mentioned before, it's LeBron's team. Facts. All right, you guys got anything else you want to add on basketball before we move forward? Nope. Um, I got predictions, early season predictions. What kind of predictions? Let me hear it. You want to hear Eastern Conference, Western Conference? I mean, I think it's a little hard to say because offseason is not supposed to be in done. I think that's All a little right, early, man. but I mean, I'm, right. I'm cool with I'll the really you. early predictions. But as of right now, who is going to the finals? Let me hear it. To the finals? Nah, I'll take that back. I'll give you top five in the East, top five in the West. All right, let's hear it. Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Chicago. Not in any order. Okay. What did I say? Brooklyn, Milwaukee. Miami. Miami, thank you. I'll put the Hawks, the Celtics. Wow. For my East. Wow, really? Yep, so no, no, no 76ers, no Bucks. I said Bucks. You said the Milwaukee. Bucks. Oh, I'm sorry. So no 76ers. Bro, that's it's iffy, man. I don't that. What about too, the Knicks? Yeah, I said I didn't say the Knicks. That's why I no. said the Knicks. Well, well, I don't believe in Kemba then if I didn't say the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, in your West, uh, let's go with my dad and your favorite, the Warriors. Phoenix. Hold on, hold on. I'm not a Warriors fan. I'm a Steph oh, my Curry dad a fan. Warriors. Don't 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 say that. Nah. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 whatever. All right, Phoenix, Warriors, uh, Utah, L.A. Which L.A. Team? I'll, I'll throw Luka in there. Wow, so you're, you're, you're moving down Dame and the Blazers. Blazers are on a top five team, is what you're saying. Oh, no, no, no. It's back It's back to It's back to him and CJ. And, uh, did you say the Nuggets? I don't think I heard you say the Nuggets. You don't think the Nuggets are a top five team either? It's gonna be a great year. Uh, I'll take out. I'll take out. I'll take out Dallas and I'll put the Nuggets just for respect. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, last thing before moving on. Once again, Ben Simmons has been nowhere to be found. Philadelphia has been blowing up his phone. 
I saw a Come comment online. I saw a comment online that said uh, he, he must have put his cell. Somebody must have put his cell phone on the top of a rim because he doesn't know where the basket is. Uh, so that should have me dying. Um, the rumor is that Ben Simmons is open for a trade, but will only play for the Warriors since he is in contract. They really have they really have no say. Do you think the Warriors pull off a trade to get Ben Simmons? And if they do, what do you think happens to the, this Golden State Warriors team with the healthy Clay Thompson? Andrew Wiggins, Draymond Green, Wiseman, and then Ben Simmons with Steph Curry. Uh, Lord Fish, I'll start with you. Do you think this is a good move? Absolutely. It takes the pressure off of him, so he'll probably be able to play better. But if he has a healthy Clay and he has a healthy Steph, it'll be good. He can, it's, I feel like him being that, that guy, it's him and Embiid, him being that guy in Philadelphia, he just can't handle the pressure. Yeah, so he can't handle being a top two option. So you're saying yeah. he needs to be a th- third or fourth option. He needs to be a third, yeah. But I feel like with people, you wouldn't even staff, be a third option in the Golden State because Andrew Wiggins is definitely the third option. You don't think so, King? King, 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 King. What are you saying about, about over there? Wait, are you are you upset with pieces. my man Benny Boom? What's happening? It's not that. It's the real. It's the realism of this trade. It's not going to work. Whoa, whoa, Warriors, why won't Warriors work? are the Warriors are better off than where they are. Than where they are right now than if they get Ben Simmons. Because one, Ben Simmons can't shoot the ball. You're gonna have to give up your rookie Moody. Eh? You're gonna have to give up the other rookie they drafted. You're gonna have to give up Wiseman. You're gonna have to give up Andrew Wiggins. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't think they're gonna have to give up any of that. And the reason why I don't I agree, I don't think that's gonna happen is because Philadelphia has been rejected for every single trade they've thrown out there. And from what I saw, they threw out like six or seven different trades and every team said, no, it's not going to happen. So the asking price that they want, they're not going to get. And the Warriors sadly aren't re-signing Kelly Oubre. So, you know, they can't use him as a trade piece. So I do think they would have to give up Andrew Wiggins. Um, but I could see the Warriors getting away with, you know, giving up one of their young guys like Jordan Poole, um, who I do think is a nice up and coming guard. And then, you know, maybe a couple of the rookies they just picked up or some draft picks. Um, but I don't think they're going to have to give up Wiggins or Wiseman to, to get Ben Simmons, um, especially think, since they have Embiid and then they just signed Andre Drummond. Why, why would they get Wiseman? It wouldn't make any sense. If anything, they would ask for Wiggins in return. Uh, I can see Jordan Poole and Wiggins getting traded for Ben Simmons. They should have um, they should have tried to get James Harden when they had the chance, bro. Oh, yeah, they should have. They fucked up. But all right, guys, that's enough of basketball. We spent plenty of time on that. Moving on to the NFL, there's a lot going on, but we're going to start off with these injuries. Uh, So many things are going on with the NFL, you know, with the NFL stating that all, you know, coaches and personnel have to be vaccinated in order to be on the field. Players do not have to. Uh, Lord Fish, I'm going to start off with you on this one because I know one of your favorite players, Cole Beasley, you know, came up publicly and made statements about why he's against this and why he does not like this. So I don't know if you looked into this, but I know you've probably seen it. What are your thoughts on this situation with what the world's going on with right now? I don't know. It's unfortunate. Like, clearly COVID-19 is still relevant. I don't think it's as crazy as it is. We're not going to get into details like that, but – uh Lamar Jackson, who's vaccinated, he tested positive and has to Yeah, I, I saw. But yeah, he, he's been out since um, – let's see. I just had it pulled up. If you go down the list and you look at injuries and everything like that. He's been out the, since August 2nd. There's a player, two players on every team that is out for COVID-19 reserve. And it's just – it's it's fucking bullshit. So before just we let keep going play. on, let me ask you this because the NFL already made a statement. If somebody tests positive – they're going to forfeit a win. You know, that's an automatic loss on the yeah. schedule. So, you know, and it's crazy, you know, people talking about the vaccine. I don't want to get political here. I just want to speak facts. You know, it, it. I know you're vaccinated. I'm not vaccinated. It doesn't matter if you are or not. It's pro-choice. You do whatever you want. I don't think people should be forced to do anything, whatever you're happy with, whatever you're comfortable with. There's more people now who are vaccinated that are getting t- – that are testing positive. And then you look over at like Minnesota's locker room when you have somebody like Kirk Cousins and the backups that choose not to get vaccinated. And then you have the coach freaking out because he doesn't have any quarterbacks in camp right now because of COVID. What what are your thoughts on this, man? Like like you have Lamar Jackson who is vaccinated, testing positive. Then you have a, a whole QB room where only one guy is vaccinated and everybody else can't participate. Like, what do you, what do you have to say to this? 
you're gonna get COVID regardless, whether you're vaccinated or not. Just yeah. it's, exactly. It, it, it's it's right place, right time. The wrong place, right the wrong time. It's we should just get rid of it. Just let the players play. Oh, you're saying fuck it, just let just everybody it. do whatever you want. Hey, 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 if you're healthy enough, like they're, they're young. It's not like they're old and decrepit. They're fucking young players. They're in the best shape of their lives. So these dudes play. I hear what you're saying, man. But then at the same time, like you don't know, you you can't keep these guys locked up. You know what? And what the NBA did with the bubble, people don't want to go through that. And you know, yeah, with, with the NFL and traveling, you can't do that. So like, I understand what you're saying by just let these guys play. But then that means they're not going to be able to see their friends, their family. You don't know if they live with grandma, and then all of a sudden you give it to them, and they give it to grandma, and then grandma dies. I, that's why it's not a good idea. So uh, I do agree with the NFL just shutting down the game. But now I'm worried about because you know we have the fantasy football league coming up, and this is going to be huge. Um, so how do you think this is going to impact schedules? You know, especially you know wins and losses. You know, it's going to be crazy if you have an undefeated team and then all of a sudden they can't play for two weeks because fucking somebody got COVID. We went through this last year and everything seemed to be fine. So. Well, last year sure. they rescheduled games. They said there's no rescheduling this year. It's an automatic loss, so it's completely different. You better pray to God or something. You better you better <laughs> open pray. King, what are your thoughts on this, man? Like, how do you feel about an automatic loss if somebody tests positive? My thing is, how do you combat it? Teams that are like Miami, like Miami's real big with the uh, Delta variant right now. Like yeah. the those cities that are, like, very big with the shit, bro. It's, I don't know. I just think it's a tricky place. And it's kind of messed up on how they're treating the unvaccinated players to get a loss for it. I mean, it comes, really it comes down to, you know. It comes the, down the to team com- camaraderie, like, from top to bottom. Because, dude, I'm not going to go undefeated. And say we're going, like you said, we're about to go undefeated. In the last two weeks, someone gets COVID because they went to the club and we were just, you know what I mean, following guidelines. And then we lose two games, messes up the playoff seating. And then, you know what I mean? Your chances go out the window. That That's pretty rough. But I feel like, hey, that's something that got to be talked in to the um, players' union. That's I agree with you. Yeah. Some, in, something the next one. Done, especially before kickoff because – Preseason's about to kick off, and I'm very excited about that. You know, we have the Hall of Fame game going on tonight. Um, I haven't checked the stats since halftime, but I'm very excited to go back and finish watching the game. I'm just happy football's back. Uh, once again, we have our fantasy league coming up soon. You know, we'll talk about that when the time comes. But, um, Lord Fish, go through the injuries with me right now. What's happening in training camp? Who's missing? All right, so the biggest injury that recently happened is the Indianapolis Colts. So yes. their new star quarterback, <laughs> Carson oh, Wentz, gosh. and uh, star offensive lineman, Quentin Nelson, both have the same foot injury and both had foot surgery the same day. Pizza. So recovery time is 5 to 12 weeks, and the earliest possible clear date would be September 12th. Who's but playing quarterback in Indiana? So you have Jacob Eason, who's a second-year quarterback out of Washington, who was a fourth-round pick last year. Um, he's got a strong arm. A lot of hype around him. You have Sam Ellinger. He's the rookie out of Texas. They got him in the sixth round. And then you have journeyman Brent Hungley out of UCLA. Picked fifth round 2015. And this is the fourth team he's played for. Uh, yeah, he, he, used to, he played Packers. for Green Bay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I actually like uh, Brent Hungley, but I thought they threw him to the Wolves way too soon. Um, and it was very unfortunate for him. But, you know, when Aaron Rodgers went down, he had to show up. And I, I think they tore him apart, man. He was just not ready. He was way too soon. Serious question. Do If you are the Indianapolis Colts, you have Carson Wentz, who was in Philly, MVP, won a Nick Super Foles. Bowl because of the greatest bench quarterback of all time, Nick Foles. Do you go to Chicago and say, hey, I want Nick Foles. He's your third string quarterback. No. You bring him into Indiana knowing Carson Wentz no. is going to freak out mentally. <laughs> Why would you Absolutely do that? not. You, can, you can't bring this dude back in. <laughs> Why would you, you do that? So I don't know if you know this. The 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 GM that's in uh Indianapolis right now is the same guy that worked with Foles in Philly. 
Why wouldn't you? Where'd you they go love each other. Out? They know each other. They're friends with each other. And he even came out and said, they asked him in an interview with Chicago the other day, hey, have you heard from him? Do you think they're going to trade for you? No, I haven't heard from him, but all he has to do is text me. You know, he, you know, he's third string in Chicago, bro. Why would you not go after Nick Foles when you guys already worked in the same system in Philly? Now you're just in Indiana. He has the weapons. T.Y. Hilton and all them boys are out there waiting. I'd say bring back Jacoby Brissett because he's played there before. He knows everything. And you, If you bring over Nick Foles. That's a mental death, bro. That's locker room. I like it. It's would, beautiful thing because Nick Foles is the one who got the statue in Philly, bro. Trade requested. See you later. There's a reason why. <laughs> There's a reason why. So now, so listen, the media was, yo, oh, I'm God, yo. The way that they was treating Carson Wentz that year, bro, Nick Foles was supposed to be like enshrined into the Eagles Hall of Fame while Carson Wentz went through the whole season. Bro, he, he's he's there up, for life, bro. He, well, he has a statue outside the stadium right now as we speak. They put that shit up quick. Yeah. Carson Wentz, one MVP, and, you know, nobody gives Don't a fuck because Nick Injury Foles prone, played the greatest bro. Super Bowl of all time to beat Tom Brady. Um, and Tom Brady played the greatest game of all time in that game. It wasn't Tom Brady's fault they lost that Super Bowl. Nick Foles and his team just did it a little bit better. Um, but I think if you're Indianapolis right now, your best bet to win, because they have a playoff contending team, your best chance to win. I know you said bring back Jacoby Brissett, but no defense. disrespect to Jacoby because I love Jacoby and I was upset we lost him. You need to bring Nick Foles into Indianapolis, and I want to see that. No, the no you just want to see the on fire, bro. You just want to see the fire that the fucking Carson Wentz ass. You fucking dick, bro. I, I, got a, I, I got a few names you could throw out there for backup QBs. Um, you got Teddy Bridgewater in Denver. It's still Drew Locke's team. So they're going to have their quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater will be that starter by like so week get, four. Get Drew yeah. Locke. You got Case Keenum, Tyrod Taylor. You could even go after Jordan Love, but they'd never give him up because Jordan he's Love's the next, not going anywhere. He's the next guy. Uh, Marcus Mariota. Do you know who oh they should really go for? Gosh. They should go for Gardner, Minshew, or Taysom Hill or James Winston. No! Oh, yeah, Minshew, Minshew so Trevor, be Trevor Lawrence is, is in but Jacksonville, but Gardner Minshew take. is not giving up that starting spot without a fight. And uh, it's there's no guarantee that Trevor Lawrence will be the starter on day one. If Actually, if I was smart and I was Urban Meyer, I would actually have Gardner be the starter so Trevor Lawrence can be in no. the situation. Amen. And once again, I said that's my opinion. You don't have to Mental agree games. With it. Mental games. There's a reason. Hold on a second. There's because I know you're a Patriots fan, and I know there's a reason why you want Mac Jones holding that clipboard and not starting right away. Yeah, but they're in different situations. How is it different? Because he's the number one overall pick. He's supposed to start right out of the gate, just like the kid that went to uh, the Jets. He's going to start out right out of the gate. Just because you're a number one pick doesn't mean you have to start right away. Yes, it does. And that's when you have dumpster fire. You're you're expected. That's IQ. They get tested. So Gardner, would... Gardner Minshew was just loved in Jacksonville, and they they thought he was playing great. So why would you more. put him on the bench right away? He cut off that mullet. See you later. Let let the dude play, and if he fails, then you can throw Trevor Lawrence in there. I hear what you say, Trevor. Ooh. I'm just saying, let him hold a clipboard clipboard for yeah, a week. Let him, let him learn the game, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At least like, let him on. learn the game. Ain't gonna happen. I, I hate fans, I hate when fans would lose it. it. This is exactly why the Cleveland Browns took so long to get back to the playoffs, bro. They draft the quarterback, they throw him in right away, and he just fails, and then you give up on him. I don't trust me. Trevor Lawrence is an amazing quarterback, and uh, I I just think you should wait. Wait, wait, wait. I think it was a mistake for Joe Burrow to go right into starting as well. And I love Joe Burrow. You know, that dude is a fucking Madden player on rookie in real life. Like, what he did in college was amazing. Trevor Lawrence, same thing. But uh, no. Um, I do think the Indianapolis Colts, at this point in time, another person I think they should go for is Deshaun Watson. Um, Because Texans are now open for trade talks. No. The Colts really need a fucking quarterback, and uh, nobody will get mad at them for going after Deshaun Watson because Bro, of his situation. That's gonna be cheap. That's gonna be cheap. It's not. And they then, want the. They, they Bro, want the that's gonna put dude. the best fire. Fuck Nick Foles. I, I'm to, I, I mean, go get Deshaun. I'm if Deshaun Watson Deshaun. goes to the Colts, <laughs> I do think they have a chance 
to fight for a Super Bowl. You think right, they you know. trade him within the division? Bro, they don't want him anymore. He does not want to be there. Indianapolis will give up everything. They will, I, And I know you don't like in-division trades like what we saw with the Eagles and the Giants, but, like, the Colts, why not? Why fucking not? Like, give them your draft picks. Give them, give them whatever they want and get your quarterback because Deshaun Watson's ready. He's hungry, and he's going to help your team compete in the playoffs. I would take that for one reason. Deshaun's younger than Carson, and Deshaun doesn't is not really that injury prone. Take yo, long, long run, bro. Take it. I'll take uh, it. Fish, do you not agree with me that if Deshaun Watson is their starting quarterback, they will go deep into the playoffs? They have a <sighs> complete team. They have the run game, they have the defense, they have the offensive line, they have everything right now. All they're missing yeah. is a quarterback. I'm t- I'm sorry. If people thought Carson Wentz would would get them into the playoffs, Deshaun Watson is going to have them competing for an AFC championship. Check the stats. Come that, on, Fish. That's Check my personal stats. opinion, man. It's the last question of the night. Check the stats. Come on. <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's let's move on. So uh, there's a couple other injuries going on. AJ Brown, he's still rehabbing and stuff. JJ Watt, he's supposed to return week two. He's got a hamstring injury. Kyle Long from the Chiefs. His knee, he won't be back to week two. The Patriots, Jared Stidham, back injury, week seven return, but it really doesn't matter anymore because, you know, you got Kim and Mac Jones. And then we also have Dalton Keene, Stefan Gilmore, and Chase Winovich. They're not going to be back until week two. And then the biggest one out of everyone is Michael Thomas. He's out to week five. Now, knowing he's out to week five, would you draft and cuff him in fantasy? Nope. Julio nope. Jones trade. He's about to be off that team very soon. I'll give him I'll give him two more years before he gets traded. All right, let me ask you guys a question about Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott got hurt. Um, people are saying it's no big deal. Do you guys think this is going to be a concern moving into the season? No, it's I supposed mean, to be superficial type stuff. Yeah, but with Dak, he has a lot of mental stuff Shoulder. going on. So, you know, when somebody's not there all mentally, you know, that can wear and tear on them physically. So do fine. you think Dak is going to be mentally prepared for this season? Yes. I think so. Do you guys he better be think after the, that money. Do you guys believe Dak has a chance to bring his team to an NFC championship and win, like, or let alone win his division? No. No. Sure, you, really, sure. you don't think they have a chance to sure. win the NFC East? I feel like the Washington football team's got the best chance out of the NFC East. I respect that. I really like the Washington football they, team. They have I'm, the, I'm really happy with that. They have the best defense. Um, it's just a hopefully Fitzmagic can uh, perform as their quarterback. But besides that, you know they got the they got the team. I right, real quick, I just want to say something. This is it's really near and dear to my heart. Um, the Tim Tebow experiment oh out, has, <laughs> has <laughs> outlasted outlasted Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin was cut by the New York Giants. Kelvin Benjamin is not a tight end. I heard I heard um he weighs like a tight was, end. From what he was saying was like the coaches wasn't trying to like give him the time or whatever, blah 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 blah. Yeah, but from what I saw is they weren't giving him any opportunities. And the sad part is it's kind of crazy because if the, the first two string tight ends weren't even there because of injuries. O'Shaughnessy wasn't there. Uh, and the other guy wasn't there. Kyle Rudolph. There. Yeah, Rudolph wasn't there. Um, and based well, off got, what um, Urban Meyer has been saying, uh, even if Tebow does make the team, he will not be a starter. Um, and I sent that article to you, Fish. So I don't know why you're all happy over there. Um, I do not see him starting over Shaughnessy or Rudolph. That's not going to happen. You. No, you're talking about oh, Sean saying someone else. I'm talking about the Giants. Um, what do you call it? I know what you're talking about. You said he catches with his body. That's what Urban Meyer is saying. But I've seen plenty of clips of Tim Tebow running routes. He looks, he looks big. He looks like he can be used as a Yeah, but, but a he's lot of using, those clips are without pads, bro. And the, the few catches he has he with was. pads, he has no contact. Let's see he what was he can using do with his, his hands. He's is a body. He chipping the D end. He's a is body. Is he gonna? Is he going to bog down on the fucking Aaron Donald? Is he going to do that shit 24-7, bro? He's God's warrior. All right. Let's see, bro. I hope so, man. I just hope so. 
Um, Cause man, I know, I know one of those DNs is gonna be waiting. I know they're waiting to pop him. As soon as he gets the ball, bro, they're waiting to sack. He's gonna be a sacrifice for the league. Absolutely. Uh big thing with the Packers. Rogers back, and he gets his guy Randall Cobb. Yeah, I'm so happy for that whole situation. Not not for Aaron Rodgers, you know. Once he came out and spoke and actually like said everything that was going on and why he did it, and all the old Packer players that are no longer on the team came out and showed their love and support for Aaron Rodgers because he didn't have to come out and say any of that stuff. Um, do you guys, now that we know why Rodgers did what he did, do you uh, have any more respect for him or are you still think he's a piece of shit for doing what he did? Lord Fish, I know you were really mad with him. You were huge on Jordan Love and, you know, saying fuck Aaron Rodgers, it's Love's time, let him go. What What are your thoughts on what Aaron Rodgers had to say about the Packers? I, 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 didn't, I didn't listen to all his comments and stuff like that. I heard he completely shitted on them for a bunch of time. I didn't get into it. He was so, it, we kept hearing about this dude so much. I didn't want to hear what he had to say. It was like the same. It reminds me of like Brett Favre, of how he retired and then he came back. He retired and then he came back, or he was going to retire and then he comes. I just, it gets old. And I don't know. I'm, I'm happy he's back. You know, it's always nice to be able to watch a talent like that. He's definitely going to be a Hall of Fame quarterback, or he's definitely going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. It'll be interesting to see, especially with Randall Cobb back. I, I I wonder if it's going to take away from Devontae Adams now that he's got that chemistry back and he's got his old favorite wide receiver back. Oh, he got hey, you got the tight end, he got Adams, Cobb. That's good because he didn't. I think outside of the tight end and Adams, he didn't trust any of the other wide receivers through the year because that's why Devontae got all those damn touchdowns and yards when he came back. <laughs> I do think now that Aaron Rodgers is back and uh, him and Devontae Adams have been, you know, sharing this whole last dance shit, I yeah, do think Devontae heart Adams heart. is 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 prepped for another big NFL season, and I do think he will be another top wide receiver moving forward. Where do you guys see these guys going after this year? Because we know both of them aren't returning. What, what do you guys see happening with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams after this season? They got to team up on the team. I'm going to say Jeopardy for Aaron Rodgers. And uh, I'm going to say Devontae. No, Jeopardy, Jeopardy's got his new host, man. I know. I'm just talking shit. Um, and I could probably say Devontae Adams would go where he's a definite number one. I would love to see him come to the Patriots. But um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to say the Patriots right now. The Patriots? Yep. For both of them? No, just for Devontae Adams. Uh, I have where, where do you see your Aaron Rodgers going? Done. You think Aaron Rodgers is going to retire? Yep. But he he's the one who made him work it in the contract that he can go into free agency. I don't think he would do that if he didn't want to play, still play football. Nope. I think he'll he'll be done. His mind might change. You never know. I have a feeling he'll be done. All right, King. What are you thinking about this, man? I see them either they they stick together or one just go. I can see Aaron Rodgers going to any team. If he hits free agency that he wants to, I would love to see Aaron Rodgers come to the Patriots. Um, yeah, we all would. I don't know. It's really up to them. I see Devontae Adams probably going to a high octane offense other than Green Bay where he could just do his thing. Um, I will say this. Um, I do see him going to the Denver Broncos next year. Uh, I would not be surprised if Devontae Adams went with him as well. Uh, Denver Broncos, they have all the space in the world, all the money. And right now yeah, with um, Lynch, Lynch Locke ain't playing, and that. Teddy Bridgewater, they don't really have any guaranteed quarterbacks at this point in time. So I do think Aaron Rodgers will go to the Denver Broncos next year. Also, LeVar Burton is a great, great Jeopardy host. Aaron Rodgers can't take that. <laughs> All right, guys, you got uh, anything else, anything else to add? Last thing I want to talk about, so I'm going to say this. Um, as you know, Hall of Fame class 2021 this Saturday, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m., they get in trying Peyton Manning, Calvin Johnson, Alan Franca, Drew Pearson, John Lynch, Charles Woodson, contributor Bill Nunn and coach Tom Flores. Great class. Excited to see that. Um, on the other hand, Chad Mendez, who hasn't fought since 2018, has left the UFC and is now signed with the Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited to see what weight class he fights at and uh, how he's going to transition from mixed martial arts to bare knuckle boxing. That last bare knuckle boxing championship was really good. Absolutely. 
But next episode, guys, we're going to pick up. We're going to talk about the ultimate fighter. We're going to recap going all the way up to where the finals are now. Um, I know, King, you haven't been with us on that one. But if you haven't seen The Return of the Ultimate Fighter, everything is on Hulu. And it is a great show. Shout out Ricky. He's going to win it all. Lord Fish knows that he's just a fucking hater. Spoiler alert. Pooh Bear is in the finals. And I can't wait to see who has to fight. All right, King, you got anything to add? Stretch. Stay forever young. Sorry, get guys. Pinch nerves. Uh, <laughs> the Hall of Fame game came to an end. The Pittsburgh Steelers won 16-3. Najee Harris did not run the ball in the second half. Once again, he had seven carries. Uh, didn't do much, man. The end of the game with just 22 yards. Once again, longest rush was for six yards. So, um, playing against scrubs, I don't know. It doesn't look like Najee Harris is going to be a, a first-round pick this year or even a second-round pick at that based off what I'm seeing so far. Um, But on that note, peace.